Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, I hope you're all having a wonderful Thursday. I am Jessica Berg. I'm the director of the Minnesota Cup, and I'm really excited to kick off and say welcome to our 2021 Life Science and Health IT Showcase. Um, Minnesota Cup, if this is your first exposure to us or your first one of these virtual events, we are a competition based at the Home Center for Entrepreneurship at the Carlson School of Management. We have nine different divisions. So this one that you're about to, to watch is um, among eight others that have been taking place this week. And we are a competition that is actually open to entrepreneurs from across the state of Minnesota. So um, we are based at the U and we have um, fantastic relationships and resources from the university, but we're unique, very unique nationally in that we are um, industry agnostic and we are open to any early stage entrepreneur to apply to our process. Um, we're also really grateful and proud to be able to offer our competition, um, the whole process, all of the mentorship, education, and resources that we share, as well as the hundreds of thousands of hundreds of thousands of dollars in prize money that we'll be giving away, um, completely free of charge to all these founders. And um, we're able to do that thanks to the generosity of our fantastic sponsors. So um, these organizations all contribute financially to the Life Science and Health IT division specifically, which makes our programming possible, um, our prize money possible, and truly without them, we would not be able to do this great work and support these entrepreneurs. So thank, thank you so much to your for your generosity to um, these, these companies. And uh, we also owe a huge debt of gratitude to the volunteer judges and mentors that give of their time to make our, our process possible. Um, since we have nine different divisions, we typically work with 90 companies every summer. And that's a lot of, um, a lot of coaching, a lot of evaluation, um, a lot of plans and applications to be reading. So I know a number of our mentors and judges are on um, watching and following along. And so a huge thank you to all of you for what you do to make this process possible. Um, I am going to pretty quickly hand it over to Jamie Bartlett, our program coordinator. She is going to be the MC for the pitches themselves. Um, and so without further ado, I'm going to um, pass it over to Jamie and I'll talk, chat with all of you again at the end of the showcase. Thank you again so much for being here. Hello, everybody. So here's our agenda for the day. Um, each of our teams are going to give you a three minute pitch with three slides. Um, and then after they pitch, they'll be asked a question that was generated by our judges in the earlier part of the season. Um, and then at the end, audience stick around because I'll put up a poll and you will get to vote on who you think is the best pitch of the day. And they get to win a little prize money for that. So. Um, get involved. Uh, we also have the chat open if you want to ask questions there. There's also a Q&A function um, if you want to ask a question of the Minnesota Cup team or the panelists. Um, panelists can, um, you know, check that out and see if a question is directed at them. Um, so feel free to engage. And without waiting any longer, let's get started. So Barbara from Channel Health. Take it away. There she All is. Right. All right, take it away. I'll go away. All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Barbara Fagan, and I am the executive director at Channel Health. And thank you very much for the opportunity to chat with you today about the Better Hearts app. So the likelihood of everyone on this call knowing someone with heart disease is quite high. In fact, in the United States, every 40 seconds, someone is having a heart attack. So at the end of my three minutes, another four to five people will be added to that statistic. So the cumulative effect of heart disease is quite high. Seven million patients every year experience a major cardiac event. Then 30% of those patients return to the hospital within 30 days of their initial discharge, costing us billions and billions of dollars. But more importantly, the negative effects on patients and their families is quite significant. So for patients that experience a cardiac event, such as bypass surgery, stenting, heart attack, cardiac rehab is the program of choice, which actually patients that attend actually reduce their chance in half for another event. 
Yet 80% of patients who are eligible for cardiac rehab do not attend. You're like, well, why is that? Well, it's because the current model is broken. It requires patients to come back to the hospital three times a week for 12 consecutive weeks. And for many, that's just not possible. They're back to work. We offer it at inconvenient times. There's high co-pays, transportation issues. And quite honestly, like many things in healthcare, we ask the patient to fit into the provider's schedule. And I know this because I've worked in cardiac rehab at a hospital-based program for over 25 years. So go ahead, Jamie, next slide. So our solution actually meets the patients where they're at. So by removing barriers to access and adding new tools of engagement, we can actually reach many of those 80% that do not enroll. So we've created the Better Hearts app. It's a patient-centered app with a staff dashboard that offers clinical oversight and monitoring the progress of their patients. So the most important thing is this new framework and app and dashboard, and this is what's really important. This allows the patient to receive their rehab when they want, where they want, and how they want. And this really results in higher participation rates, completion rates, improved clinical outcomes, and a lower cost of care. Next slide, please. For hospitals that utilize the Better Hearts app and framework, positive results have been demonstrated in both engagement and clinical outcomes. Notable results include programs actually doubling enrollment in their first six months. This increased enrollment with 80% of patients still engaged after the eight week mark has resulted in improved clinical outcomes such as increased functional capacity and controlled blood pressure. But most Barbara, I'm, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but you're just a little bit over time. So I'm gonna have to cut you off there. If you just wanna wrap up your thought. Yep. Right now, so most importantly, patients that otherwise would not attend can actually receive this life-saving program through the Better Hearts app. So thank you very much. Great job. So easy question here. Do you think the past year um, further advanced this notions for hospitals to adopt? Absolutely. I think this pandemic that we um, just experienced has accelerated the appreciation and adoption for virtual care like three to five years. So really excited. This really is about access. And then COVID just really, like I said, allowed more patients to see that this is something that can be done and they can do it. Great, good job. All right, next up, Amy. There you are. I'm here. Uh, right. Hi, um, that was such a perfect setup, uh, Barbara. Thank you for going through that. So I'm Amy Garza, the founder of Coravi Medical. And if there's one thing I want you to take away today, it is this. Hypertension or high blood pressure is a major health crisis, silently killing millions. And Coravi Medical is going to address this crisis head on by transforming the paradigm for how health is monitored. So chances are you know somebody with high blood pressure, as one out of every three adults has it, and every one of these people has an increased risk of stroke, kidney disease, heart disease, and more. You can monitor blood pressure maybe once a week or even once a day, but that may not be enough to uncover your risk because the evidence is well established that blood pressure variability, specifically nighttime blood pressure variability during sleep is closely associated with cardiovascular events and organ damage. Doctors need better tools that provide reliable, actionable insights. Next slide. Corvi Medicals. Subcutaneous Continuous Blood Pressure Monitor, or CBPM for short, is changing the paradigm for how blood pressure is monitored while addressing physicians' top unmet needs for reliable insights and day and night trends. Our tech-enabled remote monitoring solution provides advanced notice of changing health status to potentially prevent an adverse event like a stroke or other. Our CBPM will be sold to the cardiologist and leverage healthcare reimbursement. And the procedure is a minor outpatient or clinic procedure to insert the CBPM 
under the skin in the upper arm using a simple pen-like insertion tool. Then it automatically monitors and records blood pressure as well as other vitals and provides feedback to the doctor as well as the patient in a way that motivates improved behaviors to control blood pressure. Physicians have indicated that stroke survivors are ideal candidates for Coravie CVPM. That's over a billion dollar market initially. They have also said that all uncontrolled patients who struggle with monitoring compliance are good candidates for Coravie CVPM. This could be at least 17 million Americans. The need for this solution is real and staggering. And if you want a correlation, I often hear from physicians as well as medical device companies that what Coravie is doing to hypertension is similar to continuous glucose monitoring for diabetes. Next slide. So we've had amazing traction this year, starting with oversubscribing our seed round where we raised $1.1 million. We demonstrated proof of concept in both bench and acute sheep studies. And we recently completed market research that validated the need for our patent pending product and also its superiority over wearable solutions. And medical device companies, as well as institutional investors have sought us out to express interest. We are actively raising a second seed round. So reach out to learn more. Nice job right in there before the buzzer. Um, so Amy, given that uh, there's many non-invasive blood pressure measures out there, how do you convince patients to adopt this product? Well, it's great that you asked that. And that's one of the reasons that we specifically did market research also with patients. 64% of patients were very excited about the concept of an invasive solution because it makes it 100% automatic. So, and then there's, there's a lot of other reasons that go behind it, but I'll just point to that specific one. Awesome, great. All right, next up, we have Claude with CT Resources, Aplos Medical. Okay, you ready to go? Yes, thanks, thanks, Jamie, and good afternoon, everybody. We at Aplos Medical, we're building a significant business and a game-changing acid reflux treatment. Acid reflux is a chronic disease affecting 400 million people worldwide with 80 million in this country. It is the most expensive of all the GI diseases costing us $20 billion annually. Half of these people manage their condition with prescription proton pump inhibitors or PPIs. PPIs don't treat reflux, they only make the stomach less acidic. So the reflux stomach content don't burn as badly. When PPIs are used for years, things happen to 40% of these patients. One, the drug stopped working. And two, it can lead to many serious side effects, including osteoporosis and dementia. The FDA has put out warning letters about these. So these 40% or 100 million PPI failed patients badly need a treatment but they are not accepting current treatments because of their dreadful side effects, such as difficulty in swallowing, pain, bloating, et cetera. So there's really a pent up need for a good and safe treatment as there are no good options today. Next slide, please. Omega is a evolutionary revolution. It takes the best of the 80 years of the treatment experience that we have improves upon it and adds a much needed dimension that never existed before. Currently, effective reflex control means difficulty in swallowing for patients. Omega is the first to control reflux and allows easy swallowing. This Omega shaped device is simply pushed onto the esophagus in a straightforward laparoscopic surgery. This makes the treatment much simpler, easier, and safer, and allows a repeatable, better outcome for patients. It solves the swallowing difficulty issue endemic to all current treatments. Omega adopts the best approaches of the current treatments and adds new features to mitigate dysphagia, bloating, pain, and erosion. Omega therefore represents a turning point 
for the long and battled landscape of the reflux treatments and the future of standard of care. Next slide, please. In summary, we are building a multi-billion dollar business with a game-changing solution for reflux patients. We have successfully validated our non-dysphagia and safety concepts in animal studies. FDA has granted us an IDE approval to enter human clinicals. The technology is patented in the US, China, and Europe. To date, we have $3.7 million funding from NIH SBR grants and personal capital. So we are looking for investments to complement the grant award to support the clinical studies for this next generation standard of care treatment. Thank you. Great job. Okay. Um, quick question here. So Claude, what are your next steps uh, to take this to market? Well, the step is we have to finish the clinical study. So there are two phases to this. We are into the first one. It's got a feasibility uh, study. And the second one is got a pivotal study in the last study. And we have to finish the pivotal study in order for FDA to grant us marketing uh, permit to, uh, to launch the product. Great, awesome, good job. Thank you. Uh, okay, next up, oops, there we go, Andy. Coming in, still there Andy from Fistula? There you are. Okay. Awesome, all right, take it away. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Andy Obst. I'm the president of Fishless Solution. I appreciate the opportunity to present here today. Uh, we founded Fishless Solution nearly 10 years ago to develop uh, devices to help enteric fistula patients. And we're proud to say we have a current line of legacy devices that are distributed by the 3M company. Uh, however, now we're focused on developing a new line of business that's much larger opportunity to help ostomy patients. And so as background, in case you're not familiar with what a fistula or ostomy is, um, Fistulas and ostomies are both intestinal openings that come out into out of a person's skin. Uh, the difference between them is that fistulas are unplanned, whereas an ostomy is a deliberate surgery that's done to save a patient's life. And ostomies happen to about 100,000 patients a year in the US. But in either case, whether it's a fistula or an ostomy, intestinal contents drain out through an opening that's called a stoma and it looks something like what you see pictured on this screen. The challenge for ostomy patients specifically is that current treatment methods are just not that um, effective. About 70% of these patients experience complications and about 29% of these patients are readmitted to the hospital for those complications. The net result for the hospital is that they are uh, experiencing a large, much higher costs, up to $78,000 per patient, which is typically un, not reimbursed by Medicare. Uh, in addition, about 76% of long-term uh, ostomy patients uh, experience leakage and leak anxiety. Uh, next slide, please. So our new product to address these ostomy challenges is called the Limpet. Uh, it's a, a medical device that improves the outcomes and the lifestyle uh, for ostomy patients. And we've been building these since 2018. Uh, the unique thing about our device is that it uses net vacuum therapy or negative pressure wound therapy to secure the device uh, to the tissue around the patient's stoma. This therapy actually prevents complications and infections, and it stabilizes that incision site uh, to enable better healing. It has a triple seal that helps prevent leaks, and it can go much longer, uh, up to seven days be between device changes, which is much longer than a standard ostomy pouch. Next slide, please. So our vision is to become the worldwide performance leader in ostomy and fistula care. Uh, we're targeting a $3.7 billion serviceable obtainable market, and we have opportunities to expand to address other medical problems. Uh, we have a very unique product, it's novel, and it does prevent complications for the new patients, as well as stopping leaks and improving the quality of life for long-term ostomy patients, some of which must live with their ostomy for their entire life. Uh, we can reduce the financial exposure for the hospitals and the hospital system by reducing readmissions and long-term hospital stays. And we've got a proven business model and team. We've been at this since 2013. Uh, we've sold direct into the hospitals. We've also got a current channel uh, partner in 3M that drives our sales and marketing effort. Uh, we have a growing patent portfolio and deep experience in wound and ostomy care. So we're currently raising capital to execute our commercialization pathway. And I look forward to your questions. Good job, Andy. 
Um, okay, question here. Uh, it can be hard to get physicians to adopt uh, new technologies. How will you address this? So we've found great success in working with surgeons who are struggling with very challenging patients and making them our champions when it comes to uh, VAT approval, value analysis team approval in the hospitals. So our initial focus is on the nuostomy patients and the surgeons that are having trouble with complications for their patients and making them heroes. Awesome, great, great job. Thank you. Okay, next up, Ramji from, I wanna say Laplace, but I might be overpronouncing that. Yep, Laplace. Laplace. Yeah. I'll add my French to it. Great. Uh, okay, take it away. Hi. Right. Hello, I'm uh, Ramji. I am founder and CEO of Laplace Interventional. Uh, we are developing a medical device to treat tricuspid regurgitation. So, so what is tricuspid regurgitation? Um, TR occurs when the tricuspid valve leaks. Uh, it's a tricuspid valve is the valve between the right atrium and the right ventricle. Uh, it is consists of very fragile tissue. And in some patients can also house pacemaker leaks. In a nutshell, it's a very complex valve and tricking t uh, treating TR can be tricky. Why is treating it important? Uh, severity of TR has been directly linked to mortality of patients. In fact, four-year mortality of patients with severe TR uh, is over 60%. Surgery is also not an option for these elderly patients because surgery is invasive, risky, often leads to significant rehospitalization. Next slide, please. So we at Laplace are developing a transcatheter tricuspid valve prosthesis, a valve that can be deployed through a vein in your neck, the right internal jugular vein, uh, uh, through a catheter. This makes the entire procedure minimally invasive and therefore not needing an open heart surgery. Uh, what we offer is therefore a huge improvement in life expectancy and therefore, and also quality of life for these patients. So why is why Laplace? Uh, so there are currently no uh, commercially available solutions within the US. Uh, there are some in development, but all those ones don't address the four key requirements of an ideal transcatheter tricuspid solution, which Laplace does. We have a very solid uh, team, which is highly skilled and experienced, both in terms of device development as well as clinical applications, since we have some good partnership with some leading interventional cardiologists. Uh, next slide, please. So in terms of the market, uh, there are more than 7 million patients that are currently suffering from tricuspid regurgitation just in US and Europe. More than 500,000 new patients are diagnosed with TR every year. Uh, in a nutshell, we are talking about uh, a total addressable market with some conservative estimates of around $3.6 billion currently, which is expected to grow to about more than $10 billion by uh, 2030. Laplace is planned. We have a solid plan in terms of uh, getting this product out to, uh, uh, to, out to the market. We have four uh, uh, phases, concept, design, clinical feasibility and clinical validation. We've already completed concept through solid proof concept results. Uh, we are currently raising series A funds uh, for $8 million for uh, the design phase. And we are looking pretty good for that. Uh, and the funds from these would be uh, used for long-term uh, uh, preclinical feasibility and testing. Thank you. Great job. Okay, question here, which I kind of heard you touch on a little, but. Um, how could partnerships play a role in helping you decrease costs and streamlining your timeline? Yeah, so I mean, it, it is a PMA product. So I think from a cost standpoint, I think it is going to be expensive. Uh, uh, but having said that, we are already partnering with uh, clinical institutions like Mayo. So Dr. Rihal is from Mayo Clinic uh, and he's our chief scientific advisor. Uh, we'll also be uh, partnering with a few other medtech uh, 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 institutions within uh, Minnesota. So overall, we're trying to do the best possible in reducing and getting to the market as quickly as possible. Great. Great job. Okay. Next up, Jeff from Luminary. Looks like you're already unmuted, and there you are. Okay. Take it away. All right. Well, thank you. Um and hello to everyone. <clears throat> My name is Jeff Leiter, and I'm the CEO of Luminary Therapeutics, <clears throat> and I appreciate this opportunity to kind of speak to you. Um, before I dive into who Luminary Therapeutics is, <clears throat> I thought I would 
<clears throat> just let you know a little bit about what we do as a cancer therapeutic company and some of the stats that are specific to the United States in regards to cancer. So it continues to be the second leading cause of death. There's 600,000 deaths per year. So it's like a, the COVID thing that we've just gone through in the US <clears throat> and it happens every year. Nearly four out of 10 of us will receive some type of cancer, be diagnosed with some type of cancer as we go through our lives. And there's a hundred different types of cancers out there. So if you wanna to go to the next slide. Additionally, before I dive into who Luminary is, I'm just going to give you a background on if you're not familiar with the <clears throat> transformation that has happened in the way that cancer treatments or cancer <clears throat> therapies have been um, utilized over the last decade, um, this will give you a little bit of background. So the most common names that you might hear in cancer treatments these days are CAR-T therapies or immunotherapy. And CAR-T stands for chimeric antigen receptor. And what they have done over the last kind of decade, if you will, is nothing short of a miracle. So what happens is you use your own immune system with some genetic modifications to your blood cells that go and fight cancer, your T cells and white blood cells, um, and effectively are able to really attack the cancers using your own body. And what will what was really transformation, and I was <clears throat> part of this industry as it started out um, in 2010 and 2012, in blood type cancers, there are certain, <clears throat> call it maybe 60% of the blood type cancers, where they were getting cure rates, of what they thought were cure rates of 80%. So 80% of the, pants, the patients were responding to the treatments and their cancer was gone. And so this was nothing short of a miracle um, that we hadn't seen before. And all kinds of companies sprung up and started going after this type of work. There's 400 new companies over the last 10 years that have done this. But what effectively happened um, as we got three to four years into these patients, something started happening where it wasn't a cure as it was expected to be with just a single dose of a treatment. Many of the patients started relapsing um, and today there's 47% of those cancer patients that are treated that relapse. And this is due to something called antigen escape. So luminary therapeutics is very focused on antigen escape. And if you can go to the next slide, what we have done is most of these cars that have been used in the past are what's called in this chimeric antigen receptor, a single construct of a car. So they attack one antigen. And what the cancer cells do is start to effectively um, outsmart the, <clears throat> the treatment of the own T cells and stop presenting that single antigen. So what we have done at, at Luminary Therapeutics is we have developed a, a car or chromatic antigen receptor construct, therapeutic construct that has three different receptors on it. <clears throat> So with our vision, we've been able to kind of look at the problem differently. And we've been involved in this industry for the last 12 years and have been able to come up with a method where we can effectively, um, <clears throat> and I guess, I'm, is that the noise that I'm over time? So anyway, with our vision and our technology and a widely different approach than using three receptors, we're able to hopefully, um, you know, not have antigen escape happen to us. All right, great. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, so quick question here. Uh, what is the potential market for this specific type of therapy? So these markets that are growing are in the, you know, hundreds of billions, because as, as noted, there's so many patients that contract cancer. Um, mostly blood cancers comprise 20% of all cancers. We are also very focused on solid, tum tum solid tumor cancers, which comprise 80% of all cancers. So it's a, it's a, over a hundred billion dollar market. Okay, great, thanks, good job. All right, wrapping up here, last one, Maria. Thanks, Jamie. Uh, I am Maria Thanasio presenting on behalf of Marpam Pharma. We are on a mission to cure HIV. HIV is currently treated with antiretroviral therapy, which is a daily, uh, daily pills. It's costly, over $500,000 over the lifetime of the patient, and requires 95% lifelong adherence to be effective. 
With treatment interruption, viral load rebounds, resistance develops, and patients become infectious to others. It's not a cure because HIV hides in the body in places where, that are immune protective. So our own immune system can't get to the HIV. This is really a large market. It's a $10 billion a year drug market. And because it's a really serious public health issue, um, it's a, the government spends $28 billion a year as well. But the market we're tapping into is really the lifetime treatment market. And that's a $600 billion market for the people in the US who are currently living with HIV. Next slide, please. We're developing a one-time treatment for HIV. After this treatment, patients would no longer be required to take antiretroviral medications. As Jeff Leiter was just talking about, it's a CAR T cell therapy, which modifies the patient's own cells to target HIV where it's hiding. It reduces the cost over the lifetime of the patient and improves the quality of life. We've interviewed over 35 HIV providers, all of whom thought that our therapy was really a great idea and were very enthusiastic about it. We have promising data in the best model of HIV, that's a primate model. Our product is the only product we're aware of in development that targets HIV where it hides. And so we think this is the only product that will be effective as a one-time treatment. We're on track for FDA approval in 2027. Next slide, please. Uh, we have the team that can deliver. Um, I have led a, a team of professionals who developed a drug for the treatment of depression. That drug is now on the market. Dr. Skinner is my co-founder. She has spent 10 years at the University of Minnesota developing this uh, therapy. We have already raised 2.6 million in non-dilutive funding. We plan to interact early and often with the FDA to minimize regulatory risk. And we plan to start a seed round uh, towards the end of this year or the beginning of next year. So thank you for your time. Awesome, exciting stuff. Um, okay, question here. Uh, a one-time treatment is a game changer, but at a high cost. Is it something that third-party payers will reimburse potentially? Yeah, we interviewed several really experts in the reimbursement field and CAR-T therapies are already being reimbursed for oncology. And the thought was that for um, HIV, they would also be reimbursed. This is very much a, a paradigm shift for insurance companies paying a high one-time cost. But there's um, been a, you know, a history of doing that, for example, with bariatric surgery, which was a very high one-time cost, but all insurance companies decided together basically to cover it. Awesome. All right. Great job. Okay. Um, that brings us to where the audience gets to get involved here. Um, I'm going to launch a poll here, which is uh, your chance to vote on the best pitch of the day. So I'll get that going here. Okay, there's still some votes coming in. So maybe give you a couple more seconds if you're still trying to make up your mind. But it's a tight race, so um, get those in if, you, if you're still deciding. Okay, I think we can call it, Jamie. I think so. All right, I'll end it, you announce. Awesome. So uh, congratulations to Cora V Medical. You are the winner of the best pitch. Woohoo! Yeah, this Woo! is the one drawback of the of the no audience audio, but huge congratulations and um, feel free to fill up the chat with with any kudos for Amy. But um, congratulations to all of you for your great pitches. It is not easy to um, try to summarize such complicated topics in only three minutes and and make the information accessible. So um, big congrats to all of you. 
Um, I just want to close up. We, we were super efficient and unfortunately had a couple teams who weren't able to pitch, but we, um, I just want to put all of these great um, companies and what they're, what they're working on into context in the rest of our competition for you. Um, they all applied uh, back in March and April of this year, rose to the top of an extremely competitive field. Um, this is some very um, life-changing, literally um, very technical, cost-intensive work. So um, they're already winners for making it to this phase. They were selected from all the life science and health IT applicants by our volunteer judges um, back in May. And they have been working, um, working on a business plan, a pitch deck, and a one-minute video throughout the summer with support from education sessions and mentors. And they submitted all that information uh, to our judges once again last, last week, um, about a week and a half ago. So they have done a ton of work to get to this point. And next week, our Life Science and Health IT judges will be meeting um, to just determine or, or, or vote and try to deliberate of which three companies will move on to our final round um, for the division. So that means that those three companies will present a longer, more detailed and less rushed pitch uh, to those judges uh, to help them determine who will go on to win the division and compete for our grand prize. So um, they've done a ton of work up until this point. They've got a lot of um, some great work left, left ahead. And we are excited to share um, sort of the next public opportunity for you to watch more pitches from both the division winner um, of Life Science Health IT, as well as our other eight divisions. We'll be at our final award ceremony on Monday, September 20th. So please um, hold that date, uh, save it on your calendar. And if you are not already, please visit our website, mncup.org to uh, sign up for our mailing list. That is the most efficient and effective way to keep tabs on how our companies are doing, where we're at in our competition process, and to make sure that you receive our event invitations. Um, we really wanna be able to share these fantastic Minnesota companies with as many people as possible. So please help us spread the word and sign up if you haven't already. And um, yeah, just thank you again so much for spending an hour of your Thursday afternoon with us and for cheering on these fantastic founders they are doing amazing work and we're really, really proud to even play a small role in helping them grow and succeed. So um, thank you again so much and we will be in touch and um, yeah, just see you soon. Bye everybody.